Hey, Cryptizens. Tonight's stories. LG expands into blockchain and crypto. White House seeks public opinion on crypto. Coinbase tracking crypto transfers for users in Canada, Japan, and Singapore. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is March 26, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm your host, Nick. The cover model for the podcast is Tex, and together we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. We bring you new stories on familiar topics. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. See, this is why I keep saying it. Crypto is very bad for criminals. Just the very nature of crypto makes it a horrible thing to try to steal. So these two chuckleheads, Ethan Wen and Andre Locke, they've been arrested. They were charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud and money laundering, quote, in connection with a million dollar scheme to defraud purchasers of NFTs advertised as Frosties. So apparently, like more than a few NFT dev teams, these guys were totally anonymous. Their project, Frosties, sold out in 48 minutes. They got roughly $1.1 million in ETH. All the feds had to do was wait and follow the addresses. So three hours after the sale, all of the ETH that had been gathered in the sale had moved to a different wallet address. And that was 356.56 Ethereum. So they sold out their 888 Frosties and they never delivered. IRS investigators tracked down their IPs, the ones that they used in the Discord where they promoted their scheme. They connected those IPs with accounts on Coinbase. We're going to be talking about Coinbase here in a bit. Now, in this case, it was the KYC laws that got the thieves caught. And that wasn't all. Oh no, they were working on a scheme to do the exact same thing again, but they called it embers. That was scheduled to happen today the 26th. So if you were planning on buying some embers, I've got some news for you. Now, before we get into tonight's stories, let's take a quick look at the markets. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is 2.01 trillion, headed in the right direction. It's up 1.15% since we spoke last. The top five cryptos by a market cap are Bitcoin up 0.36, Ethereum up 1.38, 1.38, Tether, Binance Coin up 1.24, and USDC. The global NFT market cap is just above $10.13 billion. That's up 0.63% in 24 hours. It's been kind of flat for a few days, hasn't it? The top five NFT collections on OpenSea by sales volume are Izuki up 59%, World of Women Galaxy, that's a new collection, so I don't have a previous number for it. Board Apes down 36%. Mutant Apes up 28%. Bape Diverse up 33%. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. LG explains into blockchain and crypto. That's right. LG Electronics has updated their official business development goals. Those goals now include cryptocurrency and blockchain-based software. Those are two new business areas in their corporate charter. According to a South Korean report, they were added during the annual general meeting last Thursday. One of the objectives was stated as, quote, the development and selling of blockchain-based software. The other was, quote, the sale and brokerage of cryptocurrency, which is very interesting to me, especially when a phone manufacturer gets interested in selling and brokering crypto. That's really interesting. A LG spokesperson was asked whether this was to start their own exchange or platform. Their response was designed to avoid any kind of rumors or speculation. They said, quote, nothing has been decided yet. We just mentioned business areas in a broad manner. I don't know about that one, though. 
It wasn't all that long ago that rumors started flying about LG and Bitthumb. Bitthumb had announced that they were working with a, quote, large company. And that large company was helping them create an NFT exchange. Now, several media outlets in South Korea were reporting that Bitthumb was working with LG's subsidiary, LG CNS. And why wouldn't they? Look at how much ETH is going through OpenSea every single day. OpenSea's transactions, they were responsible for 10% of all Ethereum burned to EIP-1559 improvements. You know, adding an NFT marketplace would totally help BitThumb up their competitiveness. Because right now, they're in a pretty solid second place in terms of like Korean exchanges. But they've got a long way to go before they catch up to number one, up bit. All of that said, BitThumb would not confirm who they were working with. They released a statement that said in part, quote, It is impossible to confirm whether it is LG and CNS and whether it is just them or a group of companies. If they are working with BitThumb to create an NFT marketplace, it wouldn't be the first time LG's gotten involved in NFT adoption and integration. Now, earlier this month, they announced that they were working with GroundX. And the goal for that one looks like they're going to create a line of smart TVs that have NFT capable. Kind of like we reported that um, Sony was working on something very similar to that. And not only that, but they announced that they were working with Soul Auction Blue. So Auction Blue is an online art auctioneer. So it looks like they've got priorities around NFT art in the works already. And keep in mind, Korea did just elect a crypto-friendly leader in the form of President Yoon. Now, a lot of Yoon's campaign was centered on deregulating crypto in South Korea. White House seeks public opinion on crypto. So remember that executive order President Biden signed a while back? That's where this is coming from. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, or OSTP, is a part of the executive branch in the U.S. government. And as such, they work for the President of the United States. Now, the OSTP is turning to the general public to identify the energy and climate implications related to crypto. They've started up a study to look at the scope for offsetting energy use and climate changes as they relate to digital assets. Now, if you remember, back on March 9th, Biden signed an executive order. And this order directed different agencies in the government to look at cryptocurrency and digital assets. And they were told to focus on six key areas. Those areas were consumer and investor protection, financial stability, financial inclusion, responsible innovation, the U.S.'s global financial leadership, and combating illicit financial activity. And this survey is part of it. The OSTP invited the general public and the other stakeholders to share their viewpoints. They're looking for opinions on what factors impact energy use and what the climate impacts of crypto are. They tweeted, quote, POTUS made clear that digital assets and cryptocurrencies must support our climate goals. Today, OSTP issued a request for information seeking your input on the energy and climate implications of digital assets. Be sure to respond by 5 p.m. Eastern Time on May 9th. And then there's a link to a page on federalregister.gov. So this executive order requires OSTP to submit a report on digital assets and to identify factors that negatively or positively affect energy and climate concerns. Here's a quote. In particular, this right for information seeks comments on the protocols, hardware, resources, economics, and other factors that shape the energy use and climate impacts of all types of digital assets. And this doesn't exactly seem just like it is a witch hunt to get rid of crypto. I say that because the OSTP is looking for a public opinion on the potential benefits of digital assets, especially in the areas of addressing rising energy and climate concerns. 
So it looks like they're going to use this as more of a tool to decide which way to go with future regulation. Coinbase tracking crypto transfers for users in Canada, Japan, Singapore. It looks like some of Coinbase's customers are going to have to start providing detailed information when sending crypto. I'm not sure that Coinbase really has much of a choice here. In order to comply with local regulations, Coinbase is requiring additional information if you're sending to another financial institution or exchange. And it's going to be specific information. Here's a quote from the official blog. If you're located in Canada, Singapore, or Japan and are sending digital assets outside of Coinbase, you may need to provide information about the type of wallet you're sending assets to and information about the recipient depending on the country. So what does this mean? Some of these changes go into motion starting on April 1st. Citing the Monetary Authority of Singapore, Coinbase said that they are required to ask for additional data for all transactions where someone from Singapore sends crypto from their Coinbase exchange wallet to an outside address. Now, this includes the person's name and the country they live in. If you don't know the information, Coinbase just won't send it. Kind of the same thing for Japan. Starting April 1st, if you send crypto out of Japan, you'll have to provide the name, residential address, and the exchange for the destination wallet. Now, that falls in line with the rules that have been written by the Japan Cryptocurrency Trading Association. Starting April 4th, the changes for Canadian users go into effect. Coinbase said that they are requiring the name and address for the recipient of Canadian users that send more than $1,000 Canadian. It's a bit more than $800 US. That's if crypto is going to a financial entity or some other, quote, money service business. And in that, Coinbase referenced Canada's FinTrack for that one. So they have to provide the recipient's full name and address and that's their physical address. And you have to declare if you're moving from one wallet to that, even if it's a wallet you own, to a different wallet you own. As I'm sure you can imagine, this is not exactly popular with their customers. Bankless co-host Ryan Sean Adams was not impressed. He tweeted, quote, so it begins. Next on the menu, disabling withdrawals to crypto wallets. The Canadian government wants to trap crypto in their financial panopticon. Go bankless while you can. That's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Okay, check this out. Here's a quote. Who do you think said this? Quote, there are benefits from crypto, and we recognize that innovations in the payment system can be a healthy thing. Give up. Janet Yellen. Yes, that Janet Yellen. Yes, U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen. So my question is, who's been orange-pilling Secretary Yellen? Tell me what you think. Send me an email at crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. That's crypto.overnighter at gmail.com. And hey, give Crypto in 5 Minutes a lesson. We're up to 36 educational podcasts. Five minutes to explain one concept in crypto. And until next time, may peace reign.